good day to be alive. Amen. You don't sound too excited, but I wanted us to use this opportunity, even as I come here, just to with a happy anniversary, Brother Barry and Sister Maria Abraham celebrating their wedding anniversary. Amen. Pastor was saying marriage still works. Amen. Oh, we give God thanks for all the couples and all the families. Amen. You know the devil wants us to mash up. You know that? <laughs> but he's a liar. Amen. We're declaring it today. We will not mash up. We will not smash up. We will not break up. We're going right down through to the end. Amen. No longer you get married, the sweet it goes. Just like with Jesus. Amen. It'll be different. Amen. The lovey doveyness when you're 21 and 22 might be there when you're 75, but it's still good. Amen. Amen. I love the Lord this morning. He's been a good God. He's been kind. Come on, saints. Yeah? He's been faithful. Yeah? Oh, and he's been so, 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 so good. So I just want to bless God uh, for being God, for keeping us, taking us through another week, for providing for us. Amen? Oh, who can testify to the goodness of God in the week that's of God? Amen? Sometimes saints of God don't take nothing for granted. Amen. Every good gift. Where does it come from? Above. And it's sent down by the Father of light and the word of God says there's no variableness. There can no change in. He's good all the time. Amen. And he knows what's good for you. Amen. And he provides for you according to his riches in glory. Amen. Oh, well, you know saints, a couple of years ago, even as I prepare my heart for this word, and I, I prepare the word, and I ask God, what is it that he wanted me to say? A couple of years ago, God dropped this word in my spirit. Suddenly! And I was going through a lot of pressures and stresses, even on my, in my secular job, and, and the word of God just said, suddenly, things will change. Things are going to get better. Amen? And the word has been coming back in my spirit again. Suddenly! That's the word for the church this morning. We serve a suddenly God. Amen. So, you know, suddenly means abruptly, sharp, quick, without a ways, without notice, but something happens suddenly. Amen. This is not a gradual thing. This is a suddenly thing this morning. And so, if you are able to physically stand, I can understand the elderly and those who may have little ones and so on. Please do, because we're going to pray that the suddenly God, oh, glory to God makes an appearance in our lives and in our church, in our families, in our homes, in our very bodies today in Jesus' name. Father, we bless your name and we thank you, Lord, that you're the same yesterday, you're the same today, and you're the same tomorrow. And many times, oh God, we have searched your word and we have seen that you are a suddenly God. You change things, Lord God, on a way. You change things in an instant, oh God. And we pray, Father, whatever the situation that your people might be facing today, whether it be in their spirits, O oh God, their bodies, their souls, Lord God, whatever addictions, whatever it is that we are up against today, that the suddenly God will change it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, that our children will be changed suddenly. Our marriages will be restored suddenly. The jobs will come that we've been believing for suddenly. Oh my God, the breakthrough that your people have been crying out and yearning for will happen suddenly. And so we confess word and we declare it today that it's forever settled in the heavens. We come against the forces of darkness. We come against every principality and every power. And we subject you to the name that's above every other name. We declare you shall be silent today. You shall not intervene today. The word of God will go out with power and with might and it will accomplish with God wants it to accomplish today. We declare it, Lord God. We decree it, Father, and we say that it is forever settled and done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may take your seat, saints of God. Oh, my Lord. You say over 85 times in the Bible, the word suddenly appears. And you can't count them on times the Bible has immediately. Amen. Sister Heisen, straightway. That's what God is saying to the church today. Immediately and suddenly. Things are going to happen. So I want to share with you from the word some truths that the Lord dropped in my spirit. Some little nuggets deacon that I hope will encourage the church and strengthen the church and put the church back on the fighting mode. Amen. That suddenly things are going to happen. 
The first point I want you to, to meditate on and to hold on to is the good news is coming suddenly. Suddenly. You see it in Luke 1, 26 to 28, where the angel suddenly appeared to Mary and told her that he had found grace in the sight of God. Amen? And, and when she had found grace in the sight of God because she was pregnant and she was with child and she was the vessel to whom the Lord used to bring the Savior into the world. Amen. Suddenly something happened. Amen. The Holy Ghost came upon her. She was, she conceived this child and suddenly Jesus' existence in the flesh started. Amen. What a God. That the man who would be the author of salvation when he came upon planet earth, time is divided. How it goes happy there. B.C. Before Christ and A.D. Anno Domino in the year of our Lord. He's, he has made his mark in history because he is God. Suddenly, good news came to Mary. Amen. When the shepherds were out in the fields abiding, they said, Suddenly, a host of angels appeared and they started singing. Hosanna, glory to God in the highest. Amen. Peace on earth. Goodwill towards men, Sister Justine. Suddenly, these things happened. An excitement took place. Amen. When the disciples were walking on the road to Emmaus, and when they went into the garden in the morning, suddenly, an angel appeared. They said, what are you looking for? The living among the dead. Glory to God. He's not here. Good news. He's risen. Suddenly, you're going to get a good news. Just as Mary got, oh, help me only was one. Just as Mary got a suddenly, amen. Just as the disciples on the road to him here suddenly got the good word, suddenly you're going to get good news. Amen. You know, you get up every morning and you turn on the radio. Sometimes I don't even listen. Amen. Somebody shot and dissipates speed. Hmm. Somebody gets sick up somewhere in town. Hmm. Somebody house burned down. Bad news. It depresses you. It pulls you down. It weakens you. That's why the word of God is important. It tells us to focus on things that are lovely. And you know, in Philippians 4 8, whatever things that are true, whatever things that are pure, honest, lovely, think on those things. Because when you think on the bad news, it makes you feel bad. Amen. So focus on the things that are good, the good news that God has for you. Amen. And so it's critical saying what we watch, what we listen, what we take into our bodies. We don't want the bad news. We're here for the good news today. I don't know what you've been believing for. Whether it's your citizenship application, whether it's your college application, amen. Whether it's the, the land application, the loan application from the bank, whatever you are believing for, I'm here to declare to you today by the power of Almighty God that the good news is coming suddenly. Oh, glory to God. Suddenly. You remember when the disciples were praying for Peter and he was in jail? And he got released from jail. Amen. And the little girl ran to the door. Peter knocked on the door when she ran in. And she said, Peter, go. She, come, she can't talk. She opened the door. She said, Peter is outside. And the people were praying for Peter to be released. And when Peter was released, they didn't believe. Suddenly. You're going to get the good news and I want you to believe it. Amen. Don't doubt it. It's God confirming his word and it's God doing what he is saying. He's going to do for his people. He's going to give you some good news. And it's going to come suddenly. In Jesus' name. Amen. You sound like you don't believe it. So I'm going to put you on to point number two. Your deliverance, maybe your ears are tied up today. Maybe your ears are blocked up today. But the word of God for you is that your deliverance is coming suddenly. Oh, help me in here, Holy Ghost, today. You might be tied up. You might be bound up. You might be held down, pressed down. But you're going to be free suddenly. You might even be in jail. I don't know. You may get a pardon from the Governor General. But it's going to come suddenly. Acts 12, verse 7. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shine in the, shone in the cell and he struck Peter on the side and he woke him up. He said, quick, get up! And the chains fell off of Peter's lips. That's what the word of God says. When Jesus touched you, the chains must fall off. You have to, well, let me tell you, when God says yes, nobody can say no, you know. And he's going to deliver suddenly. You've been praying, you've been leaving for, for the thing to break off of you and to stop. But today is the day when it will happen suddenly. 
You have to believe the saints of God. We see the same situation. Remember Paul and Silas? Paul and Silas in the dungeon. She's Irish. They're in jail. They're chained. Midnight hour. And they started to sing. Let me tell you, there is something about singing in the midnight hour. It rocks the foundation of wickedness. They had Paul and Silas chained up. I don't know what they were planning to do to them the next day, but they started to sing it and they started to praise God. It's right there, Acts chapter 16. And verse 26 says, Suddenly, there was a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken at once. And what? All the prison doors flew open. And everyone changed, became loose. Let me tell you something, saints of the living God. When you worship and you praise with a passion, the suddenly God shakes the foundation of whatever it is that's holding you. And it has to let you go in the name of Jesus. Suddenly power. That's the God we serve. Not a weaky, weaky, gentle Jesus, meek and mild God. It's a suddenly God that breaks chains. He's a warrior that fights for his children. Amen? Just as Paul and Silas were set free, you can be set free today. You remember Paul when he had his conversion experience? Suddenly, he gets converted. And when you get converted, everything changes. The passion you had to persecute people is the passion you're going to have to pro proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just ask Paul. He was a Saul. He was a terrible man, wicked. He used to hold people clothes and tell them to go and stone Christians. That's what he did. He said he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. But when he met, oh glory, when he met Jesus on the Damascus road, suddenly the word of God says a bright light shone. And Paul, Saul became Paul and he was never the same again. And that's what happens when you meet Jesus. When you have your suddenly moment, deacon, things change. Amen. If you used to chat plenty for the devil, you go chat plenty for God. Passion, it changes. Amen. If you could dance in the dance hall, you will dance in church. Amen. If you could sing all the reggae and, and all the talk and all the other songs. You know, some people, I don't know, some kids, they're 10 and every song they know. This is what you have the passion to sing to the world. Amen. You're going to have the passion to sing the songs of Zion in the house of God. Suddenly, it changes. It shifts. Things happen. Amen. And I want to let you know this thing. The length of time that you were bound up has nothing to do with the intensity and the suddenliness it is of the world, of the transformation and the change that's going to happen to you when God loses those chains and he sets you free. It's an immediate work today. It's a straightway work today, oh God. And it will be done suddenly in the name of Jesus. And that brings me to my third point. I want to get out of the way here. I don't want to stay around here too long and talk. I want the Holy Ghost to do the thing. Amen! I want him to move in our situation today. Suddenly. And my point number three is this. The wicked will be dispatched suddenly. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I was so encouraged by Sister Senki's testimony on Wednesday. And a lot of us can identify with that testimony. Have you ever worked anywhere where people grind you night and day? Have you ever lived anywhere with neighbors that cost you morning, noon, and night? That harass you, that bully you? Have you lived in houses with love or even sometimes relatives that make you feel unloved, unwanted, they are unkind? Well, today is the day, suddenly, when God is going to shift the mass of the thing, man. Enough is enough. Help me, Holy Ghost. Isaiah 49, 25 says, God said, I'm going to contend with him who contends with you. You know what contend means? God said, you're going to fight them. You move. And I will save your children. Suddenly, God is going to do it. He's going to dispatch the wicked. Amen. He's going to shift the situation around. They've been born. You have to beg them, please leave me alone. Stop troubling me. When they see you, they laugh and nobody gives them a joke. Come on, help me, Holy Ghost. Don't act like if you don't know what I'm talking about, saints of God. You know. Some curse you openly, some drop off words every time they see you, but it's for you. They harass you. They make you don't want to go to work when, when, when you get up in the morning. When you turn and you see the wall, lift up. If you can lift up your house and move, you will do it. But you know what? They come and meet you there. So suddenly, 
they will be dispatched without remedy. That's what God's word is saying to his children. Today. I'm tired of God's people being beaten up, taken advantage of, ripped off. They do want to do everything that they like. But the God that we serve is a mighty man of war. And he fights for his children. And he does it suddenly. Here's what the word says to people who God has warned. Proverbs 29, verse 1 says, He who is often rebuked and hard is his neck will suddenly be destroyed. And that without remedy. The naughty, the rude. And here's what the Bible says about naughty people. Proverbs 6, 12, 15. And don't be afraid, saints of the living God, to use the word to whip the devil inside of people who want to destroy you. I declare it here. For, let me tell you, say, it's, it's, Joe used to tell us, it's kill or be killed. When it comes to the enemy. Amen? I'm not telling you to stab nobody. I'm not telling you to shoot nobody. But you use the weapons of our warfare. They're not carnal, but they're mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. Here's what the word says. Proverbs 6, 12. A naughty person. A wicked man. Walk it with a froward mouth. That word doesn't mean corrupt. He has a corrupt mouth. She has a corrupt mouth. He winketh with his eyes. He speaketh with his feet. He teacheth with his fingers. Forwardness is in his heart. Meaning corruption is in his heart. That's all it takes about evil and corruption. He devises mischief. Trouble. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. My pastor talked about last week. Trouble. There's some people who get up every day to see how they can make other people's lives miserable. But I have news for them today. The God that the believers serve is a suddenly God. So be careful. Some of you will lose your job and some of you will lose your life. Amen. Here's what God is saying. He saw it this God. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. The wicked shall be dispatched suddenly. Amen. All the evil that Satan has put up against the children of God is going to be dispatched suddenly because you are a child of the Most High God. Put your hands together for the suddenly God who will move on your behalf. Amen. And it brings me to Point number four. A lot of us have been afflicted. You know, Pastor was praying this morning, we lift up to be controlling Brother Riza. You know, all the saints who are sick and struggling, we've been praying for the Conrad, we've been believing God for their body. We believe in God for their minds, their very emotions, and who did them broken from that? Due to the physical infirmities that they face in their body. But the word of the Lord to you today is that your healing is coming. Suddenly. Oh my Lord. Let, let, let's look at the story of the Bible. It's in Matthew chapter 8. It goes from verse 5 to verse 13. It's a story about the centurion who came to Jesus. And I'm going to show you a whole new perspective on that story so that you can get an understanding that your healing is coming suddenly. This is a centurion. He was a Roman. He didn't know about the Jewish tradition, the Jewish God, the Jewish Lord. He didn't know that um, the Lord promised him Exodus 15, 26 to be a healer if he listened to him and he obeyed and did keep his commandments. He didn't know all that. All he knew that he had somebody who was important to him who was sick. And when you have people in your family that are close to you and they are sick, things of God, you know, you feel it more, you know. Amen. I sometimes pain for people who are uh, looking after um, terminally ill people or people who have a serious disease, like cancer, AIDS, whatever. They pain. Because the pressures of looking after that person comes down on them. And so that centurion was in that same boat. He was pain. Amen. And he came to Jesus. But somehow he recognized who that Jesus, the Jehovah Rapha, was. He probably heard the stories of the healings that Jesus was doing. And so he approached him. And when he told Jesus of the situation with his servant, Jesus said, I will come. In verse 7, I will come and heal him. I'll come. Saints, you know, when God says something, that's it. Whether you believe it or not, that's what it is. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. Done. He has made up his mind to come and heal him. The word of God is powerful. When he declares and he decrees things, it is established. We pray this morning what we say, God's word is what? Forever settled in heaven. Every word that we read and we 
we keep saying and we say back to the Father, it's already settled, it has to come to pass. Amen. So the centurion said, okay, I believe it. I, I hear what you're saying, Lord. But this man went into his word. He says, Lord. In verse 7, he said, I am not worried. Sorry, verse 8. That you should come under my roof, but only speak a word, and my servant will be healed. You see, the centurion was a man of authority. He could tell one, go and come and mark and heal and mark down again, and they would obey. So he recognized an authority figure when he saw one, and he knew that Jesus had for what? To do something suddenly. And so, Jesus said, man, I have never seen any faith like this. The word of God says he marveled. And he said, assuredly I say to you, I have not found such, such an ordinary faith. This is only a great faith. He said he found great faith that not even in Israel Jesus had seen that. And the sent, Jesus then turned to the centurion and he said to him, let it be done for you. Amen. Just as you have believed. Just as you have believed that I can send the word and heal your servant, it will happen. And that's not the beautiful part of the story now. When the centurion went home, they told him at the very same hour that he believed and he confessed that Jesus could heal his servant, the suddenly rougher healing virtue of Almighty God went to that sick bed where that man was sick and paralyzed and it raised him up in the name of Jesus. I want to tell the church today, under the sound of my voice, whether you're watching, listening, tuning, whatever, suddenly, the word is going forth and it will heal every sickness and every disease that is afflicting you today. God is doing the work. Suddenly, your healing will break forth speedily. Amen. That's what the word says. No matter what the doctors may say, they write off many people. Sister Miranda testified. They basically tell her they're going to, that's it, that's it. Your son is thus finished, no more. But 20 years later, hallelujah, cancer is dead and Cordell is alive because of the power of the suddenly God. I love the Lord because he's not a respect of persons. The one he did for the human servant, he will do for you. What he did for Sister Miranda's son, he will do for you. Amen. He's the son of God. He heals to the utmost. Many of us in this tabernacle are alive today because of the suddenly power of Almighty God. He doesn't think suddenly. He doesn't wish he did not this. Let me tell you, the time is getting short. Amen. Quick time. It's quick march now. It's a countdown is on. And so God is moving suddenly. In the name of Jesus. Suddenly, God. Doesn't matter. Just believe. Just believe. Confess and declare the works of God, and it shall be done for you. In Jesus' name. And it brings me to my fifth point. When you pray, He suddenly energizes and strengthens you. Eat all oh, healthy, holy toes. I thank God for Zoom. I thank God for the technology that before maybe a lot of people couldn't come out to prayer meeting, but sometimes now we have 30, almost 40, 50 families on at the same time every Friday night as we share on Zoom prayer meeting and we pray and we believe in God and things are beginning to happen suddenly. But what I know is that when you pray, you get energized. Help me, Holy Ghost. This is like, and let me tell you, the Holy Ghost is like when you put some back, you know, the energy of the body back, and you have to run out. Oh, glory to God. That's the Holy Ghost. When He gets into your, you and He empowers you, He emboldens you. Things happen, you don't get tired, you don't get weary, you can pray long. Amen. You can fast for times that you think you couldn't fast. You can intercede before God because you're energized and you're strengthened, and it happens suddenly. Sometimes you say, oh Lord, I'm going to go to dinner. On Sunday, I have to see you. I have to go wash. I have to go to the clean. And blah, blah, blah. But you're here today. You came against all odds. And suddenly, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. The energizing power of God is going to strengthen you and raise you up. Suddenly. That's what God is saying. That's what God is saying. You know, we've been born in this world and Job said it quite Remarkably, in 14.1, Job tells you of a few days, and you're full of 
struggling. And I want to let you know, you may be in troubling situations, intimidating situations, but you're going to get strengthened this morning by this word. Amen? The story is told in Acts chapter 4 with the disciples, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they were speaking boldly, deacon, and they were healing people, and the, 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 the religious people of the day said, they didn't like it. They said, we got to shut this thing down. And they counseled together. They said, what are you doing? Why are you? We are forbidding you to speak and preach in this name of Jesus. They said, no, 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 no. They brought God into the picture. In verse 29, they said, Lord, behold, they are threatening. Because they imagine they threatened to beat them. They threatened to kill, fire them. They threatened to do whatever they could do to keep them down and, and, and afflict them. But those gentlemen, those disciples, put their case before God. They brought him into the picture. That's what we do when we pray. He's the first person we invite him to take charge of the situation. A lot of times we are praying, but we are doing our own thing. And we are trying to fix it in the background. I want to tell you today, thank you, God. If you want us to do suddenly God move, you just step out of the way. And let God be God. And let God do what he's supposed to do. We are called to pray and to intercede. Amen? And God will do the rest. God will do the rest. They prayed for their faith to be strengthened. Hear what they say in, in verse 1 then. Grant thy servant boldness, O God. Boldness. And it's unrealistic. Sometimes you think that maybe you're praying and um, your fears are going to go away. Because fear is the spirit. And it comes on you and it, it may want to make you shaky, shaky and, and timidy, timidy. But today, the suddenly God is going to fill you with boldness. Amen? You're going to stand on your faith. And you're going to expect that when you pray... God answers. God hears. Expectation is something that I want us to be praying with, saints of God. When we ask God for something, expect it to be done. He's a suddenly God is going to do it sometimes. When he answers, you can't believe. Amen. And when you're praying for something, and the Lord comes through and then you say, whoa, you sound amazed. What are you praying for? Amen. That's what you're praying for. They expected him to intervene. They said, stretch foot your Hand to God. Don't just sit down and do nothing. Amen. God is depending on us to pray. Their family members are depending on you to pray them into the kingdom. They might not be here now, but they're going to come in in the name of Jesus. You know why? Because God says, I will save your children. His word. You may be dead, but they're going to get saved. Continue to believe and stand on the word and stand on faith. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. And that's the key. When God turns up in your situation and you pray and you intercede, you get filled with the Holy Spirit. This is a Pentecostal church. We believe in the power, the fire. Amen. And I'm not ashamed to say that. But if you have to call it down, call it down. If you have to send the fire, sometimes I blow. Fire for the enemy. In the name of Jesus, do what you have to do. Harness and tap into the power that's within you. You know why? The word of God says, he that is within me, amen, is greater than he that's in the world. So you, there's more in you than out there. There's more for you than against you. So use the power of God. Peter and them, they stood up and they, 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 they spoke with boldness. Amen. Because God is saying, when you pray, you will be suddenly energized and you will be emboldened in the name of Jesus. And that brings me to my sixth point. God suddenly will always change your life for the better. I don't know what it is that you're believing for. What is it that you expect it to change? But when the suddenly comes, you will change. You will think differently. You realize that God is not a respected person. You realize that God will do what he said he would do. We sing these songs all the time sometimes, but I don't want us to just sing both words. Sing with understanding. When we say he will do what he says he will do, believe it with all your heart. Because when it happens, you change. Things shift. Amen. The word of God says he does what? Exceedingly, Sister Riley. Abundantly, Sister Faith. Far above. Sister Abel, above that we can imagine or think. That's the God. That we, that's what he does. Sometimes we just say, Lord, provide. And you just want to pray the rice. And God wants to eat turkey and ham and, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Exceedingly, abundantly, far above anything that you could imagine and think. And I want to tell you today, this suddenly God is going to change the situation. Are you with me? 
We have to believe God. Let, let me tell you, let God be true with this word. And every man, woman, and child of planet Earth be a liar. Or as we say in the vernacular, a liar. God's word is true. He cannot lie. Pastor says it all the time. He cannot deny himself. He's going to move in your situation. He's going to change your life for the better. So don't be, mis- don't be surprised when he responds with a suddenliness. Remember little Rhoda? Rhoda said friends with Peter and Rhoda run out and run back. They say he must be a ghost. He's his angel. He prayed and suddenly God released Peter from prison. Amen. Suddenly God turned Paul from somebody who used to persecute to somebody who now proclaims Jesus. All the books that we read in most of the books and the epistles in the New Testament because of God. Suddenly, Nephi God starts to change that life and turn it around. Pentecost! Amen! The fire fell! And people were never the same again. That's why we're here today, you know, because the fire fell. They tarried and they prayed and they believed. And from the time that fire fell on that first Pentecost day, the church has never been the same again. The church took off. Amen. Sometimes the fire will go down low, 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 but there's always a remnant pastor. And somebody fans it and fans it deep, and the Holy Ghost will blow and blow, and the fire always blaze again. I am believing God for the Pentecost of fire in this assembly. Amen. I'm believing it for the new sanctuary to be filled to overflowing. I'm believing it for all. The people who have been praying for our auntie and uncle and brother and sister to be saved. That when they come in, and when they come, give up your seat and let them sit because you pray them in for a long time. Amen. You don't make you don't believe it. It's going to happen. You're going to live to see the salvation of God right in the land of the living. You're going to live to see God turn the situation around. And he's going to do it suddenly. That's the word God is putting in my spirit. And I have to tell you, it's a suddenly thing. And let me tell you, when it happens, testify. Don't just accept it and say nothing. Because you're going to, because that, the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony is what's going to build the church and encourage the church and defeat the enemy and overcome. We are overcomers. We sang it this morning. So when the suddenly God comes through for you, let people know. God is going to do it suddenly. It's going to change for the, for the better. God is a sovereign one. His spirit can fill you and his power will do it. You see? The enemy may instigate and he may seem to orchestrate but it's God in heaven who regulates. He controls. He has the last say. And let me tell you when God doesn't talk, nobody talks after God. Silence in the court. The judge of the universe has spoken. When he says yes, nobody can say no. When he comes through for you suddenly, nobody can change it. Nobody can reverse the decision. It's final. I want to tell you today, that he's going to come with power. And he's going to change your life. Are you in need of the power this morning? Are you in need of the change? Are you believing? Is anybody in here with me that you've been believing God for something to happen and to change in your situation? You don't have to tell me. Just tell Jesus. And you're tired, you know, you're praying until you're weary. And the enemy is telling you to give up. But the word for you today is suddenly. God is going to change it. God is going to do it. He's a suddenly God. He's a suddenly God. And it brings me to my final point. He's coming back to us. He's coming suddenly. That's why we have to be alert. That's why we have to watch. That's why we have to pray, Pastor, and without ceasing, and not give up, and not be weary in well doing. So the word of God says, in due time, we will reap if you watch it. We say it not. So we're going to keep going. It's hard sometimes, it's not easy. Don't ever let nobody tell you, oh, it's an easy road, and it's the bread of roses, and blessed, blessed, hallelujah. No! You won't get setbacks, you won't get pressure, you won't get trouble. But I know that what is waiting for us. Eye has not seen. That's the Holy Ghost. Ear has not heard, nor has it entered, Brother Hugh, into the minds of people what God has prepared for us. For those who love Him and who are looking for 
forth to what is appearing to suddenly come in. So we have to watch. We have to be alert. Not focus on ourselves first, but focus on what's going on. Focus on looking unto him, the author and the finisher of his thing called Jesus. Mark 13, I think from 34 to 37, Jesus was talking about a, a servant, a man who goes into a far country and he left his house and he gave authority to the servants and to each of his work. And he commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Watch therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house will return in. And in the evening, it might be in the midnight hour, at the crowing of the rooster, or in the morning, lest he come and find you sleeping. That is saying today, we have to be alert. And we have to watch. That's what the Spirit is saying to the church, because God is coming and is putting in the appearance suddenly. Luke 12, 27 goes on to say, They will be blessed when their master comes home, because he sees that they were watching. And I tell you the truth, the master will dress himself to serve and tell those servants, sit at the table and he will serve them. Oh my Lord. We have a banquet that's being prepared in heaven. A table that's spread. They never maybe invite you to government house or to Buckingham Palace or to the White House, but you have a table. Glory to God that is spread for you. And you will be seated with Christ in where? Heavenly places. Word. You have something to look forward to suddenly. Things are going to change. So don't focus on yourself. Try not to be weary in well doing. The Spirit of the Lord will energize you and keep you going because our God is going to put in his appearance suddenly. We'll have to worship him to come back. We're going to worship God. We're going to sing and we're going to magnify God. Because one of the things that I noticed in all those examples of the suddenly. Sister Borrow, they prayed. The angels, glory to God in the highest. Suddenly, a crowd of angels and hosts and a singing. Amen. And I imagine when that, that, that centurion son got healed, suddenly he jumped up and praised God and he blessed God. It was a suddenly thing. When things shift in the, 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 the spirit and then it shifts in the natural, we are the ones who our prayers have been behind that thing to cause that thing. So we magnify God. They prayed for Peter. There was a lot of prayer going on, a lot of prayers of worship, and suddenly the angel said, Come on, get up, time to go. So we are going to usher in this suddenly. We're going to worship God. We're going to magnify God. We may have to wear our mask, but we can sing under the mask in the name of Jesus. That was suddenly God that we serve. We'll show up today in our situation, and you will change it for the better. We serve a suddenly God. Stand to your feet.